All right, so let's get now the state N1. So I want to make a general remark. You have an equation like this, and you want to solve it. It's a vector equation. Operator on a vector, equal number on a vector, or a more operator on a vector. To make sure you have solved it, when you have a vector equation, you must make sure that every component, you can write a vector e equation in the form vector equals zero, and then you must make sure that every component of the vector is zero. What we did here is we found what happens when I look at the component along n0. And I figure out that, whoops, this equation, when I look at the component along n0, tells me what the energy is. So the rest of the information of this equation arises when I look at it along the components on the other states. Not n0, but the k states that we introduced from the beginning, the k zeros that run with from 1 to infinity. So uh, what we're going to do is take that original, this second equation, and form k0, h0 minus en0, n1, is equal to k0 en1 minus delta h n0. So I now took the same equation and I put an inner product with k0 and I say, look, k will be different from n because when we put k equal to n, that already we've done, and we've learned all about it. And in fact, n1 didn't appear. The state that we wanted didn't appear at all. So now we do this with arbitrary k. And we need to figure out what this gives. So, uh, so you have to look at these things and try to remember a little the definitions we've put. So h0, we know what it gives on k0. It gives you a number, the energy of that state. So this is another number. So that's great. This simplifies this to e k0 minus e n0 times the overlap of k0 with n1. That's the left-hand side. How about the right-hand side? All right, let's see what this is. First term, the en1 is a number. So I must ask myself, is what happens when k0 meets n0? Well, those are our original orthonormal states, and we said that k is different from n. So this term is zero with the en1. This is a number, and these two states are orthogonal. So this term gives you a zero, not because this number is zero, but because the overlap is zero. And I get here minus k zero delta h n zero. And it's a good notation to call this, to save writing, delta h k n. It's a good name for it. It's the matrix k, uh, k nth element of the matrix delta h. And this is a number, so I can solve k0 n1 is equal to minus delta h k n divided by e k0 minus e n0. And this is true for every k different from n. 
And here we find, for the first time, our energy denominators. These energy denominators are the things that are going to make life interesting and difficult. And it answers the question already that if you had degenerate states, there would be some k states that have the same energy as this one, and this blows up. And this is unsolvable for this component. So you start getting difficulties if you have degeneracies. As long as every k state, all the other states of the spectrum, have different energy from En, never mind if the other states are degenerate. They're not degenerate with the state you care. You care just about one state now, the nth state. And if that's non-degenerate, all these denominators are non-zero, and you're OK. So here is the solution for this thing. Now I can write um, the expressions for the state and the energy. So let me do it. So I have this n1 like that. Uh, you can say the following. Let me do this very deliberately first. n1 is equal to the sum over all k of k naught, k naught, n1. This is the resolution of the identity formula. That's the unit operator. You can always do that. And now you know that the state n1 is orthogonal to n0. So this becomes the sum over k different from n. Because for k equal to n, these are orthogonal of k naught, k naught n1. And that's what we calculated here. So, um, so what did we get? Therefore, the state n1, I can substitute what we had there. It's the sum from k different from n of k naught delta h n k over e k naught minus e n naught. That's n1. I should have a minus sign. The minus sign is there. That's the state n1. So the state n1 is, gets a, is a complicated correction. It gets a little component from every other state of the spectrum. And the coefficient depends on the matrix element of your state with the state you are contributing with. So you have the state n here and all the other states here. The amount of this state k that enters into the correction is proportional to the matrix element between n and k. If the matrix element is 0, that state does not contribute here. And then there is the energy denominator as well. So we're getting to the end of this calculation. There's one more thing one can do, which is to find um, and so I'm starting to wrap up this, but it's still an important step, what we have to do. I'll get the second order energy correction. What is our second order energy correction? Our second order energy correction can be found from the formula on that blackboard, E N. 2, we already found the first order energy correction, which I happen to have erased it right now. It was there. En2 is obtained by doing n0 delta h times
times n1, which we already know. So I must do n0 delta h on that. So look what you get. You get minus the sum over k different from n. Think of putting the n0 and the delta h. They're all together. It's a bra so far. It's a delta h and n0. It should go into n1. But the only state in n1 is k0. So here we have k0. And then we have delta h n k over e k 0 minus e n 0. OK, a little bit of work. So what is this? This is another matrix element. This is um, the matrix. Okay, I'm sorry. Here, do I have a mistake? Uh, yes, I have KN. I, I copied it wrong. It's KN. Yes. Yes. So here I have delta h n k. But delta h n k is this. If you complex conjugate, if you complex conjugate delta h k n complex conjugate is k delta h n complex conjugate which changes the order, n delta h, which is her mission, k. And that's delta h n k. So delta h n k is equal to delta h k n star. And therefore, the second order energy correction has a nice formula, e n 2 is equal to minus the sum over k different from n, delta h n k, which is the star of that, times this one. So you get delta h n k absolute value squared divided by e n e k n e k 0 minus e n 0. So we've uh, done a lot of work. We've uh, written the perturbation. Here is the answer. So far, we have n of lambda equal n0 plus lambda n1. n1 has been calculated. Energy is en0 plus lambda en1. That was calculated, what was just delta h in this state, plus lambda squared en2, which we have calculated. So this is as far as we will do for non-degenerate perturbation theory. But we have found rather interesting formulas. And we're going to spend half of next lecture trying to understand them better.